I'm a dude, and I'm inviting you to join me on a podcast about brews. Does that include stouts? Yes. Yes, of course it includes stouts. Like I was saying, join us every Saturday on the journey hey, hey, into... Hey, co- wait a minute. Do you, do you guys do anything about, like, IPAs? Yes. Stuff like that? Yes, of, yes, of, yes, we do IPAs. Okay. It's, okay. It, yes. Anyway... Join us on the Journey into Comics Network for Brews with Dudes. Whoa, whoa, hey, 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 do you, have you guys ever, do you care if I bring some Zima on? Yes, I care if you bring Zima. Zima doesn't count. Zima, oh. Zima's, Dr. Dongo. Anyway, join us every Saturday for a podcast that delves into the craft brew world. The following is a Journey into Comics Network production. Hey, hey, this is Josh Richmond, and you are listening to the Voice of Survival podcast, exclusively on the Journey into Comics Network. Welcome to another episode of the Voice of Survival podcast. As the introduction said, I'm your host, Nate. Today joining me is a very special guest. He is the lead singer, vocalist, if you will, of Get By. Welcome to the show, Chris Plant. How are you doing, sir? I am great. Thank you for having me. Dude, it's been a journey to get you on. Yeah, we've been trying a while. I know. I'm, I'm happy we're finally making this happen. It's like some sort of weird chess game that we were playing where it was like, can you do here? Okay, good. We're here. Nope, we can't do it then. We're going to have to change it to here. Okay, we're good then. Nope, we're going to have to move it one more time, you know? So, but right, luckily, right. Well, I think luckily we're both flexible enough with each other that it was just like, we'll make it happen. It's not any stress. Oh, absolutely. I, I've been wanting to come on, so I, I mean, I, I wanted to do whatever I could to make it happen. Absolutely. Well, just to get right down to it, you know, the first time I met you was at a merch booth for your band, Get By, and mm-hmm. we were playing a show with you where you co-headlined with the Ataris, and we opened that show, our very first show. I, I, I would, I don't know if I'd go as far as saying co-headline, but I, I mean, we we did have a, a prime slot during that show, it was, and I was pretty stoked to be on that one. That was a cool show. It was. It was a really excellent show. It was very memorable. It's one of those things that just kind of sticks out as like. You know, it was my first show in a new band. Yeah, I was say, that was your first one, wasn't it? Yeah, in a new band, absolutely. So it was like this weird, yep. like, I didn't know anybody in this scene, and I'm like a new style of musician. I'd played guitar my whole life, and now I'm playing fucking drums. What the fuck? Okay, I guess, you know. I can feel that. I can feel that. Because, I, I, I mean, I came from playing guitar in almost every other band I was in. This is, this is, my, this is my first band as just a vocalist, so, and that was only... I think we were only about three or four shows in when we played that Atari show. Oh, wow. So you guys weren't too far ahead of us. I, I guess I'm a little bit shocked no. by that. I thought yeah. you guys were a little bit more established, but um, your reputations precede you, I guess. <laughs> well, I, I guess you could say that. All right. Well, let's um, let's kick this back to the very, very beginning of this. Where are you born and raised, man? Where do you come from? Lowell, Indiana. Okay. I, I, be- I was born here. Well, actually... Technically, I, I I was born in Cedar Lake, but I was only there for a couple of years, and my family moved to Lowell when I was real little, so I, I barely remember Cedar Lake at all. I mean, other than, you know, it's right next to Lowell, but, I, you know, kind grew of. up in Lowell, went to high school in Lowell, Total- you know, and I, I've been back in Lowell again, so... Yeah, man, um, I spent a lot of time in Lowell as well, so I know that area very well, and... Uh... So, yeah. growing up, are you have siblings? Or are you, you know, a single child? Uh... No, I, I have siblings. I've got an older, actually, I've got an older sister and two younger sisters that I grew up with. Um, and then my my folks both remarried and had, my mom had another daughter and my dad had a son and daughter. 
So now I'm one of seven, technically, but uh, growing up, it was the four of us in the house, me and my three sisters. Awesome. Uh, so I got to ask of you and your sisters, who discovers music first? Who really starts to kind of put it out into the ether? Is it is it the, the mom, the dad? Who's who's nurturing you guys my, my to music? A hundred percent. It's my mom. She, she was very active in like the church choir and everything. She she had a, a women's singing group that she was in for a while. And uh, she, she kind of got us all singing when we were real little. So you were just born and bred into music right from the jump. You didn't even have a chance. I guess you could say that. Yeah. It was, it was something I feel like I was supposed to do. That's excellent. I think that, uh, as, as far as when you're a musician, when the, like the calling hits to be a musician and you realize it's something that you were put here to do, it's an awesome feeling. Cause then you're just like, yes, I have purpose. I know why I'm doing these things. A hundred percent. And it, you know, makes it every every time I get to be on stage, it doesn't matter if I'm doing it for five people or, or 50 people or 100 people or whatever the crowd size is. It's just being on stage and getting to sing or perform for people is just something like, I don't know, it's it, it's something I was meant to do and it just feels right, feels good, and I, I love doing it. And we're going to get into some of your shows down the road here in this conversation, but we're going to continue on the path because my next question is, you know, you said... You sang first technically, which is cool because it's kind of full circle. But mm -hmm. when do you become like the guitar guy and say like, is that your first instrument out the gate or were you piano first? Did you play clarinet in school? Uh, so I started singing like, and, and uh, not like anything big, but like, uh, you know, I had choir, choir class when I was in grade school. Um, and then I'd sing in church and stuff when I was growing up. Um, but the first instrument I tried to play was piano, but I didn't, I didn't last very long with piano. So um, the first one I actually picked up and started playing actively was guitar. And that was probably uh, middle school, seventh or eighth grade. I can't remember. Nice. W what drew you to the guitar musically speaking? Was there anything that like really, you know, pushed your influence or anything, or was it you know, more of a, uh, it, it was something that I always, I always thought it was a cool instrument and I always wanted to play it, but I guess what really pushed me over the top was, uh, and now, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm, it is, it had to have been eighth grade. Cause, uh, I had, I had a class, the guy that we had to do a presentation on like, you know, how, how, a, you know, you pick a machine and you have to explain to the class how it works, break it down component by component. And he was a guitarist and he brought in his electric guitar and he explained to us, you know, the mechanics behind, well, this is how a pickup works and this is how the pots work. And, you know, and I just, just watching him go through the pieces on the guitar and then start to play it for us. I was like, I have to get a guitar now. In instantaneously mesmerized by the guitar. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I ended up buying a guitar a couple months later, my first guitar, my first amp. And me and my cousin started a band almost immediately. A terrible idea. We shouldn't have been playing then, but... First guitar was? Oh, we just had to do it. Uh, it was a Fender Squire Stratocaster. Hey, nice. Arctic White. Ooh. Yeah. It was, it was cheap. <laughs> hey, no, it's, cheap isn't bad when you're play. starting out. No, and I, I, and I got a lot of use out of it, so I, I got my money out of it. Awesome. Is Did you get, like, one of the Fender starter amps that come with those packs? Uh, no, my first amp was uh, the brand was called Custom. And it was just a little 25 watt solid state amp with built in distortion and everything I needed to play some grunge and metal. And... Make that awesome chunky sound. Uh, yeah. It's interesting to note the the amp that you saw the night we opened that show the the first time I met you. Uh, the yeah. custom we had the custom amp that's like 400 pounds. It's ridiculous, but it's a thousand watt uh, bass amp. We no oh, yeah. longer we no longer tour with that thing. We have the tiniest little fucking singular ten inch Ampeg amp for the bass, and it's awesome. Yeah, but that yeah. custom man, I love that brand. So I'm sure that that guitar amp did you very well for a while. I, I it, it was great. I played on that thing for probably a good year and a half before I even tried to upgrade. And then you were like, oh my god, there are so many other sounds. <laughs> right, right. 
Uh, and I mean, I, that was when I knew nothing about the instrument anyways. So I, I just picked up the first thing that I could afford. And, you know, I didn't know anything about the amps. I didn't know anything about the guitar brands. I just played what I could afford at the time. Uh, what were you actually playing on the guitar when you start playing? Were there any bands that drew you in? Was it like classical music, church music, anything like that? Or uh, No. I, at the, so when I was in about fifth or sixth grade was when my sister got me into grunge music, you know, listening to Q101 back in the day. Um, I, I started getting in real heavy into Nirvana and Soundgarden and everything. And then from there, my taste just got kind of heavier and heavier. I started getting into new metal, like Slipknot and Corn and Limp Bizkit and stuff. And um, uh, when we first started, my cousin and I first started a band. Um, I think the first song we were playing, um, I'm trying to remember. I know we did, of course, we covered Green Day, uh, Brain Stew, just because it's the easiest song in the history of mankind to play. Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> but then we, we started moving into stuff like System of a Down. We played Sugar. Awesome. Uh, and I'm trying to remember what else we played back then. I don't know. It's it stuff around that, you know, that style. Uh, and we were terrible at it, but we tried our best. So. Hey, man, that's all that matters when it starts in music. You know, if you put your heart into it, I think eventually, you know, and knowing this now, t sometimes the first bands you put together, the first time you become like trying to jam with guys or whatever, uh, it's a teaching moment. Because yeah. when you're older now, I mean, at least I know for me, I look back on those days and I'm like, wow. We were fucking so stupid, but wanted to take over the world, but didn't do it in the right order at all. Yeah. Like, now I'm like, hmm, we're going to start a new project, huh? Let's wait a year before we tell anyone. Right. I mean, we were we were so anxious about it. Like, uh, it, at the time, it was just me and him. I played guitar, he played bass, and, and we both kind of sang a little bit. And that was our band. Like, we didn't have a drummer. We didn't, you know... We, we just were us two, and we were so excited for people to hear us that I remember, uh, like, I, in the summer of eighth grade, I was I was dating this girl, and she had a birthday party at her house, and we decided to bring our amps and stuff to her house, and, like, we just, in the middle of the party, unplugged her stereo and started playing. Like I said, no drums or anything. We sounded awful. We didn't even have a PA, but we just wanted to perform. Oh, and man. It was, Super embarrassing moment to look back on now, but at the time it was like, man, we look, we must look really cool to these people. Well, and it fed you a little bit of confidence, man. And sometimes that's yeah. all a musician needs to just get the drive, ultimately. For sure. For uh, sure. So you are playing. What was your first band's name? I didn't even think to ask that. That's a good question. Uh, Stage fright, uh, and and it was spelled. S T A G E F R Y T E because we were new metal and you can't spell things right when you're in a new metal band. Yeah. You know what's up. <laughs> yeah. So it was pretty metal. <laughs> you're doing stage fright for just a little bit and then that kind of fell apart because it wasn't working, or did you guys find a drummer and then transition into something different? Um, Where does the journey take us? No, so we we were stage fright for a while. Um eventually found a drummer. Um, uh, eventually we got another singer, uh, and it was just, just the four of us for a while. Um, and we played two shows at stage, right? Both of them were at, uh, I don't know if, how familiar you would be with it, but there was a place in, in uh, Lowell called Club X. I have not Lasted heard of for Club a little X. While. It, was, it was, yeah, it was like a teen dance club for high school age kids, you know? And then like on Fridays and Saturdays, occasionally they would have, shows there and it was always like metal bands there was a there was an abundance of metal bands in Lowell high school surprisingly um and you know it, it actually was a great little venue you know it was a great place for kids to get their bands up there and just get some exposure um we got we got to play two shows there and there, we had a great time at both of them but you know then then the band kind of dissolved a little bit um and then from there we moved on, got another drummer, and started a different band called uh, Slaughterhouse Cruelty. I love it. Uh, it was another new metal band, uh, equally as terrible. M maybe a little bit better, but not much. Um, and that got me through most of high school. 
was slaughterhouse cruelty. And then uh, I don't, do you want me to keep going? Oh <laughs> man, I would love, I, listen, we're in this for your whole entire musical journey and there's so much that can spin out of all of this. So yeah, you can tell me all about, you know, yes, absolutely. Uh, slaughterhouse cruelty. Um, we went through a few member changes with that one. Uh, you know, we, we added a guitarist and a synth player and then we lost guitarists and, and then eventually player. Um, we, we played, uh, battle of the bands. Are you, oh, did I lose you? Nope. I'm still here. I'm still right here. Uh, I started, started, started like my phone was losing you. Uh, no um, worries. We played the battle of the bands at low high school two years. Uh, the first year we placed almost dead last, but then the next year we got third place. Hey, that's but, hell. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, there weren't many bands the second year. So like we, Third place, I wouldn't say was deserved, but I, you know, it was almost default position at that point. And this is still um, you're just guitar player, guitar player, guitar yeah, player, and, and back, yeah, backup vocals uh, occasionally. And you're just uh, full on rhythm, or do you do some leads, or? Uh, you know, it was. I don't even know what to call it. It wasn't lead or rhythm. It was, you know, it was power chords. You know, for four chord power chord new metal you know it, it, it's hard to say it was lead because there wasn't really any leads it's just uh but i was the only guitarist so i guess technically i was the lead guitarist okay i uh, like that description <laughs> and then uh then towards the end of high school i started getting into like metal core and new metal uh and hardcore i'm sorry not new metal hardcore metal core and uh, I started a metalcore band called Burn by Compassion. Uh, and mind you, the whole time I'm doing all this, my cousin Tim has been in all of these bands. Because me and him, like, we, we did everything musical together. And in fact, Get By is the first band that I've been in that didn't involve Tim in some way or another. We'll get to um, that down the road, I'm sure. Right, right, yeah. Um, so Tim and I start Burn by Compassion, uh, which was like a metalcore band. And... That band was the band that I probably played the most shows with uh, to date. I, we played every weekend, sometimes twice a weekend for a while. And, and it wasn't that we were good. It's just that there was a thriving scene at the time. And, you know, we, for some reason, had a following of people that just came to watch our shows. We put on a good show. I'm not, I'm not going to say we didn't do that. We, we were energetic and we were fun to watch, but music was awful. <laughs> um, that's all but subjective, that though, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess, but I mean, you might have been I, doing I, it for somebody in the crowd you don't even know, you know. I hope so. I hope I like to think so. Like I said, we we did have a good following. There was there was a good amount of people that came to all of our shows. And, totally, and if the scene is thriving, you can just jump in and out of shows and have opportunities. That's the that's the perfect time to be in a band. And 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 it was it was an amazing time to be in a band. It really was. That was that was probably. You know, between 2004 and 2006 is probably when I was in Burnt by Compassion. And there, there was a, just a, a ton of good stuff going on in the scene at that time. Um, and then that band dissolved. And I started, uh, Tim and I started another band, uh, another metalcore band called Police vs. the Japanese Mafia. Hold on one more time just to make sure I heard that right. Police vs. the Japanese Mafia. Okay, I thought so. That's an amazing name yet again. You're knocking him out of the park, bro. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, I, I have to give Tim all the credit on this. My, my cousin, uh, the only name out of all of those that he didn't come up with was Slaughterhouse Coolty. We got that out of a school newspaper. Oh, cool. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, Police vs. Japanese Mafia was a, a name that we, we were actually leaving uh, the Showplace movie theater, which at the time, was it? It was Joe Place. It was Joe Place 16, Cherubil. Uh We were leaving the theater, and we happened to walk past the arcade game, and there was an arcade game called Police 911, and flashed on the screen. It said, Police versus the Japanese Mafia. And he was like, oh, that would be a pretty cool band name. And then the next thing you know, that's our band name. So, um, And that was that band was a lot of fun. That, that, was, that was for a long time that what I tried to – so okay, that was the last band I was in up until I think we broke up in like 2007, uh, and we 
2007 or 2008. And we played a, we played a bunch of shows in that band, but it just kind of you know everybody went their separate ways eventually. You know, people were moving out of state, and you know the only the only two members of that band that still live in the area are me and the drummer. And since that band broke up, for the last 10 years, I've been trying to get him to jam with me again because that was just so much fun. But so after that band broke up, I took some time off. I wasn't in a band for a long time. Um, am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? What am I? No, doing? you're perfect, man. I'm just I'm just along I for just, the ride. I feel, like, I feel like I'm rambling at this point. But, oh no, um, not at all. No, no, no. This is great content. People are going to be digging in your story because I am. I mean, I'm. Be, listen, one thing as a guy who hosts an interview based show, as soon as you get me locked into where I'm like listening intently to what you're saying and just like, oh, this is a great. I love this story keep going i can't wait to hear where it goes next then you've locked me in as a listener and now that makes the show even better so jess please continue <laughs> okay good i i just i get excited when i talk about this so i feel like i'm rambling but no okay, okay so, so my question i do have a question though i, I guess it was a good time that you kind of like interjected that because i do have an interesting question about the drummer is he mm -hmm. in the same area as you is this like a you guys have heat with each other is it just bad timing he lives, he lives in whiting Okay. Um, that's okay. That is a, that's a bit of a drive. I feel that. Yeah, and so when, after, towards the end of Police vs. the Japanese Mafia, he started also drumming for a band called Reverse Leg, um, and he he got a little busy with them. So like we we kind of backed off our practice schedule because things weren't really going very well for us anyway. Um, we we got into kind of a tiff with another band in the area, and then you know just things started falling apart slowly. So we just kind of let it go. And then after we realized the band was over and everybody went their separate ways, uh, I realized how much I missed jamming, but there was nobody else left, you know, like, uh, our, my, my other guitarist, uh, one of my best buddies, Corey, he moved out to Seattle. Um, our bassist Ricky moved to, I want, I think Nebraska, I'm going to say, I'm probably wrong about that, but I think he's in Nebraska. Um, Damn. my, my cousin, Tim had at that point moved down to Lafayette to go to college. He was singing in that band and we had, we had replaced him with our buddy, Mike, um, who then moved to Chicago. Uh, so me and me and Pete were the only two left in Northwest Indiana. Um, and for several years, you know, I went through trying to get Pete to jam, but it was just like, you know, wrong place, wrong time. Uh, he at one point decided to give up drumming, but I didn't want him to. So I bought his drum kit off of him and I set it up at my house and I just told him, you know, I'm going to keep this warm. And whenever you're ready to sit back on that throne again, you, you come, come to my house and we'll jam again. You know, Claim these drums. <laughs> yeah. So I, I always just held out hope, and and a, a few years ago he he did buy the drums back from me, uh, so he he started drumming again, and you know it's it's been one of those things we, we've we're still trying to jam at some point, but you know a, a couple of years ago, so so here's where the next band kicks in. Oh yay! Uh, a, a couple of years ago, uh, my cousin Tim is now living in Chicago with uh, my my buddy larry uh who is now the guitarist to get by so T tim and larry are both living in chicago and they're out drinking one night or something i i'm i'm not quite sure how the story goes but uh they're either drunk or high and they're out somewhere and they hear garth brooks come on the jukebox uh i believe it was thunder roll oh god garth i brooks. love that song right it's a great song it's a great song. fucking but yes it is Larry's a big Garth Brooks fan, and he they say to each other, you know, we should start a Garth Brooks cover band, and and you know this song would sound so great as a punk song. So they were like, well, let's let's fucking do this. I, I can cut, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Please th throw the fucks all around. <laughs> so they're like, yeah, let's let's fucking let's do this. Let's, Garth Brooks and punk, and uh, so so they get on Larry's laptop and they write some some really cool like hardcore punk riffs and. And then they call me and they're like, hey, we're doing this hardcore punk band and it's a Garth Brooks cover band and we want you in it. And so I was like, well, yeah, why am I not going to do this? So I, I, I pick up my guitar and 
you know, we, we meet at a studio uh, in St. John. My, my buddy Silas ran a, a studio in St. John. And we're like, okay, here's the song. Uh, we need to finish recording vocals and everything. And so we just put some work in. You know, we had a blast in that studio. That was so much fun. We just, you know, we'd meet up there every Wednesday night and we'd throw down some riffs and we'd, we'd sing a little bit and we'd, you know, just do stupid shit for the whole night. And it, it was a blast. And we end up releasing the CP uh, for our band, which is now at this point called No Fences. I've heard um, of No Fences at this point too. We and that was that was uh, that was my first band back since 2008. Was No Fences, and we put out that EP in oh man, 2015. I want to say we put out the No Fences EP. Sweet, sounds about right. And, yeah, and and uh, we found a drummer in Chicago. His name is Kyle, um, and we just played some bars in Chicago. I think we played like five shows with No Fences, and it was it was a blast and i i was having so much fun being back in the music scene so you know when no fences started to fall apart you know I, it was starting to get a little sad but then like larry hooked up with uh these guys that uh we used to play with like so back okay rewind a little bit sure back let's go backwards by <laughs> back when i was in burnt by compassion larry was in a band called cutaway blue and we played with Cutaway Blue all the time. And Cutaway Blue also played with a band called Auden all the time. So fast forward to 2016, uh, Larry hooks up with two of the members of Auden, uh, Jack and Andrew. And they're, they're jamming with a guy named Josh. And they're like, hey, we're doing this pop punk thing you want in. And Larry gets in on it. And then they're like, well, now we got four of us, but we need a singer. And Larry says, I'm going to call Chris. So that's, that's how I get involved with Get By. And uh, early 2016, and we're still going at it. Oh, well, we're going to uh, really dive into Get By because it doesn't just go, oh, and then now I'm in the band and everything's cool because I'm sure <laughs> there's there's still a journey within that journey. Uh, uh, yeah, get, get By has been one of the most difficult things to keep going out of any of my bands that I've been in, uh, just, it, we, we've faced a lot of difficulties going through this one, but we, we've made it through so far. So first things out of the gate, where does the name come from? Get by. Uh, Is this I, something got, you kind of walked into? It, yeah. So I, I'm pretty sure. So Larry wasn't in the band too long before I was, I'd say maybe, maybe a month at that. Okay. And, uh, and Larry just kind of, I guess they were throwing around band names and Larry just kind of threw out and get by randomly. And that's, that's the one that stuck. Cool. Well, I, lo I like the name. I love the, um, you guys have like baseball bat, like brutal looking baseball bat for a logo. And I love that. So I, funny enough, that's actually, that's trademark. We, we actually own that. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, that baseball bat logo. We own that. I, uh, I think, I have a couple, like, I have a whole folder of memorabilia from, like, previous shows we've played, and I'm pretty sure I have, like, one or two of the Get By stickers from that first show we played with you guys, like, in the very front, because I was like, yeah, it's fucking cool. That's, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Uh, so, let's get into this. They call you up. They're like, Chris, hey, man, we want you. You want in. Let's try this. Were you at all nervous, or were you jumping in, you know, jumping in the waters and ready to go because this is something you were like, fuck yes, let's go. It's time. This is going to be beyond just no fences where it's a version of someone else's music that we're emulating. This is going to be ideas that I can throw into the fold. You know, so, uh, how did that go? Uh, it, it was a little bit of everything. I was, I was apprehensive because I, to this point had never played in a pop punk band before. And I was excited because I had never been a lead vocalist before. I guess in, in no fences, I guess you could kind of say that I was the lead vocalist, but we, we shared a lot of the vocal duties in that band. I played guitar, Larry played guitar, Tim played bass, and we all three sang. I, I, I'd say maybe I did about, you know, 40% of the singing and they did 30 each, you know, so I guess I was the lead, but I not I wasn't trying to be the lead there. 
this was the first time that they said, hey, you're going to be the vocalist. You're going to be the lead vocalist. You are the guy. You are the front man. And I, I had never done that before. So I was, I was nervous, excited, you know, everything. And I was especially excited because, like, these are guys that have a history in the local scene. You know, Auden was huge. Um, Josh, Josh was in a band, uh, and he's going to be pissed that I'm blanking on the name of his band. He was in, like, a, a deathcore band almost. Uh, that was huge. Uh, Cutaway Blue was huge in the scene back in the day. And so, like, we, we all grew up in the scene together, and now we were kind of like a super group of the Northwest Indiana scene, you know? Oh, that's it, awesome. It was, it was really cool and exciting to get to be a part of that. You know, these guys are all great musicians, and, and I, I got to jump in on it. So... You guys just get right down to writing on songs and working on music. How long before your first show, you know, how long did you guys give yourselves? So, so I guess the way this band started before I was in it was uh, Josh, Andrew, and Jack were in a band previously called Still Lives. Um, and while they're playing in Still Lives, Josh is thinking to himself, you know, I've always wanted to play in a pop punk band and, and uh, he's a big Blink-182 fan. He's got a Blink-182 tattoo and, um, you know, big Newfound Glory fan. And, and Andrew is too. And, you know, Jack just, you know, into whatever we throw at him. So Josh starts writing. Uh, and when Still Lives breaks up, Josh starts writing this pop punk stuff. And he gets a hold of his buddy who runs the studio in, uh, in Crown Point and uh, starts tracking his guitar parts. And, and Jack goes in and tracks, and Andrew goes in and tracks. And the, just three of them record two songs together. Or, or was it three songs? I'm, I'm not sure. I think at first they only sent me two songs to try out. You know, So they already had a couple of songs written and recorded, and I came in to practice with them and you know, showed them what I could do. And we started writing lyrics to go on top of it. And they're like, all right, you're our guy. Let's, let's do this. So I went into the studio. We tracked these three songs at this point. It's three songs, um, which ended up becoming our first EP, Our Youth is Faded. Uh, and our first show, let's see, I get in the band in, I think, February of 2016. Our first show is in May of 2016. Oh, nice. So, we, we, we write and practice and write and practice, and we have our EP release show at the Silver Bullet in Crown Point with uh, some of our best friends, uh, Oceans Over Airplane and Low Country, and we had a blast, and uh, that just kicked things off. It got things going on the right foot, and, you know, we've just been, uh, you know, we played a bunch of shows that, I, I wouldn't say a bunch of shows, we played about a show a month or so after that, Um we play at Royal Skate and Apparel in Lansing. We play it. Uh, but, well, I, I, I think, let's see, that Atari show at Big Shot, that was in August of 2016. Yes, and it was. That, that was, I, I want to say, our fourth show. Wow. That. So, uh, and then we, you know, like I said, we tried to keep up that pace of it, you know, one show a month as, as often as we could do. Um, but we got, we got kind of a big kick in the balls at that point then, cause, uh, uh, I had to move to Louisiana to, to work, uh, in September of 2016. And so, you know, we went through this idea of, uh, you know, we, we got a, a guy to replace me for a few shows while I was gone. And, um, and meanwhile, we're trying to write and record this second EP while I'm in Louisiana and, God, that thing took forever. Uh, we, I think we started recording in October of 2016 and didn't finish it until the week before our EP release show in April 2017. Yeah, but considering so, you were in Louisiana and also working, that's still pretty impressive. I mean, it was that was a that was a struggle. Uh, that was probably the biggest struggle we had to this point was when I was in Louisiana because you know. At first, when I was leaving, I told the guys, I was like, you know, just go ahead and replace me. You know, I don't know when I'll be back, and I don't want to keep you guys hanging. And they're like, well, no, we want you to be our singer, so we'll just do this temporary thing. And, you know, it, it, so they got our buddy Frank, 
who's the singer for Low Country, filled in for me while I was gone. And then uh, Steven from from their previous band, Still Lives, also filled in for me while I was gone. I mean, we made it work out, but it was a struggle. Um, we played a couple of good shows, like on my weekends home from Louisiana. We'd, we'd catch a show here and there. And, um, and then we released our EP in May. I came home in June. And then we tried cramming shows, 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 shows. And then the next step is uh, Josh, our, our guitarist, the one who kind of started this whole thing. Uh, he goes to Hawaii for a month to visit a buddy. And then when he comes home from Hawaii, actually the day he came home from Hawaii, we played a show at Franklin House in, in Valpo. And that's when Josh tells us, oh, I'm moving to Hawaii now. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So we've been, we've been trying to savor these last few months with them as much as we could. Um, so, you know, we've been trying to get as many shows in as we could so we can enjoy him being here while he's still here. Yeah, um, man, that's that's intense all of a sudden shit yeah uh yeah it's it's uh like you said we, we've been through a lot together as a band you know and at, at this point these guys are like they're they're my best friends you know i they're they're the guys i hang with they're the guys i i, I, I mean i have i have kids at home so I, I don't get to go out and do a lot of hanging anyway but when i'm hanging it's just with them at practice or something you know you know, and actually, let's go back to that because you said you have kids yeah. at home and you got a family at home. Actually, yeah, so let's. Do. Where does you, we? You know, in all this music stuff, you didn't. You know, you didn't slip in that you have the misses and all. <laughs> all of a sudden, there's a, a couple kiddos running around. But uh, okay. let, let's build into that now. Where did you meet your wife? Okay. How does this all start? I'm mean, I'm very interested. So. Uh... Oh, let's see where to start. Well, so my wife, uh, who I just got married to in January, actually. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Um, we actually met 10 years ago. Uh, we both worked together at Pizza Hut. Um, but at the time, I was engaged to somebody else. So we were just friends. Um, and, you know, after Pizza Hut, she went on and she she was dating someone else and i actually got married um and i i was married for seven years wow um, yeah and i i had uh two kids with my ex-wife uh my my son mark who is gonna be eight this year and my daughter olivia just turned four in january uh, meanwhile ashley my my wife uh, she, she got married and had a kid with her ex. Uh, her daughter, Scarlett, is going to be four, actually, next Monday. Oh, excellent. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, you know, things just kind of worked themselves out. I, I, she got divorced. I got divorced. And uh, we decided to, you know, we wanted to be together, which was something that was kind of like a long time coming anyway. Like, we were really interested in each other when we were working together. But like I said, I was, I was engaged at the time. And, uh, you know, she was, <laughs> she was only, she was too young for me back then. Anyway, I was 22 and she was still in high school. So I never went after her then. Uh, I probably should have now because, you know, we're married now. Well, but, but your uh, kids, man, things would be so different. I know, I, I know for sure. And I, 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 my kids are the only reason I don't regret the way things go, you know, at this point. Totally. I, I, would do, I, I wouldn't trade my kids for anything. I've got, I've got amazing kids. Oh, that's um, excellent. Yeah, so I've, we've, got, we've got three kids total. Uh, we've been married since January. Is uh, prospects of a fourth? Are, are you guys oh, trying? You guys yeah. want to? Yeah, totally. That'd be awesome. That'd be yeah, so... we're 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 gonna add to the family. At at this point, the we're, it's just a question of when. Like we're in the, we're in the process of trying to buy a house and everything, and like we we want to make sure we get settled in before. Uh, oh, she's pregnant now, and you know we got to kind of try to settle down. So we we want to get settled in first, and then try try going for the fourth one. Totally, that'll be that'll be excellent. Now, 
let's talk about your kids for a second because I'm curious. You're a musician. What do the kids think of dad being a musician? Um, you know, at this point, so my son loves music and he loves uh, listening. He listens to a lot of the stuff I listen to. Um, you know, he gets excited about certain bands I listen to. Like uh, when I, I, I have videos on Facebook of like when he's, you know, he's three or four years old in the back seat of my car and he's head banging to contortionist and, and backtrack and all, all this heavy stuff. But, you know, then he goes to his mom's house for the week and he comes back and he, he wants me to play a country song for him. And I'm just not a country guy. So, me neither, you know, man. I totally feel that. He's got, he's got very, uh, you know, a mixed taste, which I, I, I'm not, I'm not mad that he likes country. It's good for him to like, other, you know, all kinds of stuff. And uh, he's lately been expressing an interest in trying to play some instruments. So I, I bought him, I bought him a guitar for Christmas, just a cheap one, to see what he would do with it. And so far, he hasn't done much with it. But you know, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of nudge him a little bit here and there and see if he wants to get into it. And maybe he'll be a musician. At, at this point, with the girls, they're, like I said, they're only four, so it's. it's they, almost they, really they, tell for sure, but uh, I know they love they love dancing, they love singing, and you know they love listening to music. So I, I feel like music could be a part of their life too. Do they get embarrassed when you sing? Uh, you know what? So they have not been to one of my shows yet. Which uh, I'm hoping to change that soon. We've got a couple of all ages shows coming up that I I'm hoping to bring them to at least one of them, just so they can see me do my thing on stage and get the experience. How that goes. Um, but you know, we've been in the car a couple of times and I'll just, you know, we'll switch from whatever we're listening to the next song. I'll throw on a get by song and you know, they'll be listening to it and nodding their heads along and stuff. And I'll just kind of be like, Hey, you know, who's singing on this song? And they'll be like, Oh, it's dad. And you know, ah, just listen to something else. And, That's yeah, awesome. Kind of- and you're like, Oh, son of a bitch. Like, come on. <laughs> As I thought you guys were going to love what we were doing. Damn it. Your dad's a rock star. You don't even know it. <laughs> uh, so on the other flip side with your wife, what does she think about the music? And, and I'm sure she's been to shows and has some support for what you're doing, or you probably wouldn't be doing it or wouldn't be married to her. So how does, how does that all go? She's been incredibly supportive. Um, actually, uh, a couple of our first dates were when she came to the no fences show. Um, and he, he, she was there for all of no fences and she's been there since get by started. And, you know, she's, she's been very understanding. Like when I, when I was living in Louisiana for work, she was still at, at home in Lowell, you know, and I was down there by myself and I, I would only get to come home one weekend a month. And for that one weekend from Friday to Monday, that, that was the only time I got to see her for the whole month. And, and she was very understanding that, okay, well, a couple of these hours, I have to go to band practice. I have to go into the studio to get this EP done. And, you know, she she was understanding, supportive. She's been to almost all of our shows. I think the only show of Get Bys that she's missed so far at this point was just because she was sick as a dog. And, like, I I couldn't have drug her out of the house if I tried. Um, but, uh, you know, she, she runs our merch table a lot of times. In fact, she's she put together our merch table. Like she bought the rack that we hang our t-shirts on. She bought the tote and she folded all of our t-shirts and you know, hell yeah. She she does everything she can for us. Get you a woman who can do both. Right. She's, she's like our, our biggest fan. And I I love that question. I'm, I I think I know the answer, but I don't want to ever assume things. Uh, is she musically inclined? Does she do any singing or playing of any instruments or anything like that? She doesn't play anything. And she's one of those people, she insists she can't sing, so she tries not to do it. But I've heard her sing, and she can. I, like, I, and I, I've been encouraging her. I've been telling her, you know, let's, you know, come into the studio with us. Record a small part on one of our songs, you know. Just, just do something. Have fun with it. You know? Just to see what happens. Yeah, but she won't do it. But she yeah. loves music. Um, you know, we, we listen to a lot of the same bands, and, and we're interested in a lot of the same music, which is part of the reason, like, it works so well we go to shows as much as we can and we you know we have a blast seeing bands and and even local bands like she loves coming to local shows with me and so she's very into music she just just is not a 
performance itself. Totally understand and respect that. So that's great that you guys have like an interesting dichotomy between each other where she almost gets to live vicariously through your love and ability to perform in front of people. Yeah, yeah, I guess you could say it like that. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a total curveball, get out of the family talk for a minute, get back to some more band talk here. Uh, apologize sure. to my listeners. By the way, I've got a mic cable that's cutting out, which, of course, everything's got to go wrong. But that's fine. It's not going to damage the episode that much. So I'm curious, now that you're doing the lead singing thing, man, a couple things mm-hmm. come to mind. My first question is, what's the worst thing that's happened since you've not had an instrument in front of you? Because you have to feel incredibly naked, I, I not, not to use that word lightly, when you're in front of people and you don't have a guitar and you just have to look out at the crowd and get into it and create an energy. You know, what's uh, been some, some embarrassing moments and then what's been some amazing moments? I want to see both sides of the spectrum. So, all right, I guess the embarrassing thing, which, I mean – it's not that embarrassing, but, uh, like I, I hate watching our first couple of shows. Um, because like you said, I, this is my first time not having it and holding an instrument, you know, uh, not, not to like quote Talladega night, but like, I did not know what to do with my hands, you know? So I, I, I felt stupid, like being up on stage, like, what do I do with my arms and what do, am I supposed to pace around on stage? So for my first couple of shows, I, had a mic stand and i just hugged the mic stand like the whole set and i i you know i carried it across the stage with me and and watching the videos i just i i look like i had no idea what i was doing you can absolutely tell that i had no idea what i was doing um so that that was embarrassing i guess and and then um i believe it was at that atari show again this was not something that was super embarrassing but um there was a a Actually, there's a video on, I believe it's on YouTube, um, of us playing at that show. And in the middle of the first verse of, I believe, our first song, I was trying to take the microphone out of the stand, and I dropped it. So, like, it fell. I, I caught it, but I still, like, oh. there's just this chunk of the verse where, like, all of a sudden I'm, my voice isn't there, and you're watching me untang- untangle this microphone cord and... The whole time you're like, so, fuck, I fuck, guess, fuck, why is this happening right now? First song, what the shit? I guess if that's the worst stuff to happen, that's not too bad. Yeah, um, that's not the worst thing I, in the world. You, you know what else is embarrassing? So we have this song called Fake Taxi, which is literally written about when Ashley, my wife, and I started dating. And there's a line in the song about banging the backseat of a car, which... I mean, it's pop punk. Of course, there's going to be, you know, references to banging and stuff. Totally. So, so it's, it's, it's totally like, you know, it, it goes along with, uh, hey, there's your train again. Train of our existence uh, showing up in every fucking episode that we do here. We uh, cannot escape I'm, it. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, so there's this, like I said, this, this line about banging in the backseat of the car, and we're playing at Big Shot. And who's in the audience at Big Shots is my mom and my kid sister and my niece. When our guitarist decides to, you know, my buddy Larry decides to say something, oh, this song's about fucking in the backseat of a car. And like, ah, in front of my mom, you know, like, I didn't want to do that. You're like, son of a bitch. Yeah, but it was cool. She didn't, she didn't say anything about it. And, yeah. um, but then on the flip side, the, the cool stuff, um, We've played a couple of shows. Uh, our, our favorite venue at this point to play at is Franklin House in Valparaiso. Um, Eric, the promoter there, and I believe he's also the, the chef there. He's been super supportive of our band, super supportive of the local scene. And uh, uh, he's booked us there a couple of times with these amazing lineups. And the, the bar gets packed. And the best thing I love about playing those shows is there is actually this this chunk of people that like, I'm not sure I even know who these people are, but I've seen them at these shows and they're singing along to my song. You know, there's, there's people standing in front of me singing my lyrics in my face, you know, and it's, it's the most incredible thing I've ever felt. You know, even though there's only, you know, the bar is packed with 75 people. It's not like I'm playing an arena of 3000 people, but 
just to have those five people up front singing my song to me is it's, it's, it's amazing dude to have one person that you didn't tell to come to your show sing your song to you right. is a fucking right. win so yes absolutely so it was so it's so incredible and i, I love playing in valpo for that reason uh just because we have we have a good fan base in valpo Hell yeah! Is there are there any other milestones along this band's history that are are also uh, really memorable to you that we should discuss? Oh, man, you know, I feel like everything so far has had at least you know at least every single show we've played has had something memorable happen. You know whether uh, I don't know. Uh, we played at BG Gators one time, and there was only about fifteen people there, but. Uh, half of it was like friends and family and it was just a party you know like we, we had a great time and everybody there having a good time and, and uh, all the crowd as it was that was one of my favorite shows we played just because it was so fun um let's see uh the, there was the franklin house show when josh told us he was leaving uh he broke it to us right before we went up on stage that night oh ouch so it was that that was a, a painful set and we you know we made our way through it and and uh but we had a great time playing that show you know because it, it had heart you know it, it it had meaning and feeling to it because we were making it the best we could so we could have those memories with josh um i've had a couple of sets like so on on our second ep uh or die there's a song on that EP called uh, Three Hearts, One Blood that uh, I wrote. It's, it's basically like a song to my son and daughter uh, because when I was going through the divorce, things got nasty and, you know, it, it was tough to get to see them. And, and you know, it's gotten, a, it's gotten so much better since then, but I was going through that when I was writing the song. So, like, that pain was still there. So that, that song is, like, real powerful and and real personal to me. Uh, and there's been a couple of times playing it on stage where like, I, I, I've literally just kind of broken down and luck, luckily we play that as like our finale. That's always our last song that we play. So I was able to quietly slip off stage so I could sob in the parking lot for a couple of minutes Compose and nobody yourself. would see me. But, uh, you know, I guess the, everything's had its own good moments. Everything's had its own bad moments. Um, we played with some great bands. We played, uh, we played with we we played at a, a a hardcore festival in Chicago with some of like the most brutal beat down hardcore bands in the area. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Drowning or The Truth or uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to remember who else was on that show. But The Truth and Drowning are like buddies of ours, and we we got to play with them. And the headliner on that show was a, a band called Kublacan, which I'm not sure if you're familiar with them either. But they're yeah. they're not a national touring hardcore band, huge. And, and, uh, we got to open for them. And that was, that was pretty cool. Like we were such a misfit on, on that show, but that was a blast. That's when you stand um, out, man. I love you know, being the, uh, wild card of the right. show. Yeah. And it, it was, it was a lot of fun, you know, and, and we've, we've met some great people, played with some great bands. We, we got to open for, I mean, you were there. We got to open for the Ataris, which was like a surreal moment because like how many times did you hear uh, their version of Boys of Summer on the radio growing up? You know, I, I mean, I, I and, and Larry, Larry even said while we were playing that set that uh, their, their album Blue Skies was like the first album he bought on cassette. And here we are opening for them. And, you know, that was cool. Super surreal um, moment. Yeah, so we, we got to play with Lucky Boys Confusion. That was cool. They're Chicago legends. Um, I don't know. It's it's just it's been a wild ride. You know, the the whole thing's been a wild ride. And hopefully, we get to keep going. With it. Well, that's a great segue because my question was next was going to be, what is next for Get By? Especially, you've got a member of the band that's going to be leaving, going to Hawaii. And a big mm -hmm. change there. There's a gap to fill. Is there a need to fill the gap imminently? What's the what's the what do you guys do here? So Josh has told us he's leaving in May. Okay. Uh, he's got his plane. He's got his plane ticket already purchased. He's leaving in May. So uh, until then, 
we're, we, we have a show coming up at the end of March. Uh, we have a show at the beginning of April. Uh, we're hoping to book one in May uh, before he leaves and hopefully just enjoy these last, last few shows with him. Um, and we, we have, at this point right now, it's just a backup plan. Uh, we have a, a guy that we're going to start working with to, to hopefully drop into Josh's spot when Josh leaves, but we don't know how it's going to work yet. We don't know how serious it's going to get. And it's, it's a lot of questions right now, you know, uh, not a lot of answers, but a lot of questions. Um, so we're, we're going to, we're absolutely going to try to keep going. I mean, we've already toyed with the idea of just going on as a four piece and like, I picked up a guitar for a couple of practices and we played as a four piece and tried to reinvent ourselves and it, it wasn't going well. So we're, we're back to, back to the same goodbye and we're going to try to keep going with that. Um, Interesting. It seems like now is the perfect time to write a new album, you know, like we'll just right. sneak away and write an album for six months till we figure this shit out. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, we've, we've talked that idea around. Um, I, I, don't want to say too much about it. But, totally. Uh, no, no spoilers. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, no spoilers, but there, there may be something coming down the pipe sooner Excellent. than later. Excellent. Well, um, I'm trying to think of another great thing. I wanted to ask you something specific to get by, and sure. I cannot for the life of me. Damn it. It pervades me right now, so we're going to move on. Okay. So the the thing I'm going to ask this is the last part of the question we're going to kind of then we're going to transition here. So you're in get by yep. and music is something that is definitely therapeutic on all fronts and it helps people get through terrible things they've dealt with whether it's like you said you had divorce and I understand the hardships that can bring on multiple fronts. I am a child of divorce. I've seen friends divorced. It's it's brutal no matter how you slice it. There's no nice way to say it. Um but aside from that, with the music, there also has to be a different hobby that you do, whether it's Dungeons and Dragons or video games or something totally different like collecting lamps. I don't know what it is, but what is it that gets you at ease, you know, when it's time to kick uh, back so and not do the thing that is music? So I'm... I guess I, I'm a nerd, like on all fronts, basically. I, I've i played Dungeons and Dragons for several years. Unfortunately, yeah. my, my group kind of disbanded a couple of years ago. Uh, basically, when I had to leave for Louisiana was, was uh, maybe even before that, but uh, we have not found time to play in probably two years at least now. Damn. Um, uh, but I... I hopefully getting back into that but you know i and not just dungeons and dragons I, I love board games i love any any kind of you know paper and pen role playing is fun to me too um i am i'm a collector i like to collect things like i i just started uh i just started pop vinyl about a year ago um so i'm i'm diving into that um i collect old video games i've probably got about 30 nintendo games and 30 Super Nintendo games and a, a whole bunch of 64 games, PlayStation 1 and 2. and um, I love all that kind of stuff. Uh, I collect DVDs. Um, I watch a lot of movies. I watch a lot of TV series. I, I don't It's just a, anything nerds do, I'm probably doing it in some some fashion. <laughs> Excellent. That's why I think we're friends because I, I yeah. do notice on often accounts we have almost identical tastes in very many things. Um, For sure. Especially when you were listing off music earlier, you were like, System of a Down, I'm like, fuck yeah, one of my all-time favorite bands. Slipknot, fuck yeah, yeah one of my all-time favorite bands. Corn, please yeah. keep sure. going. Like, <laughs> yes. Are, are you going to say Tool next? Because I'm sure... Uh, how how do you feel about this new Tool, al tool album they supposedly started recording? It's weird because I thought they already had an album done that somebody, I think Sebastian Bach said that he had already heard the album. I don't know if you heard that, but um, Sebastian Bach had said something like, yeah, I just was hanging out with Maynard and he let me hear the whole new album. And I don't know if that was to infer it was a new Tool album, but if, they, if Tool is actually going to the studio and they're actually going to write new, new material, 
I don't know what's to come because it's been a long time. What was the last album? Ten thousand days. Yeah, yeah. Fucking two thousand six or something. Yeah, I, and at this point, it's almost like, should they? Has it been too long now, or is this going to be like a great second coming? You know, like I, I'm, I'm not sure how to feel about it. But it's, the the headlines the other day I saw online were that they officially have entered the studio to start recording again. So, oh, that's exciting. Oh, only time will tell how that turns out, you know? Well, and all we've got is time. Now, I'm going to ask you one more question here before we get out of here, and this question is something that I should have asked you before, but we're on sure. air, and I can't not do it now. So do you have a track from Get By you could send me this evening that I could put at the end of this episode for our listeners to hear you play? Oh, absolutely. I'll, I'll send you whichever track you want you know uh I, I, all of our music is up on spotify it's all on Bandcamp. it's all accessible so yes please um, plug uh, plug plug please tell people where yeah. they can find you uh we're, we're on facebook instagram twitter uh our our handle is get by nwi uh pretty much everywhere um get by dot um you can get our merch there you can get our t-shirts and stuff there um or or Big Cartel. I can't remember the link for our Big Cartel merch page, but our merch is up on Big Cartel also. Um, and like I said, it's all up on Spotify. So, I, I mean, uh, I don't know how many of your listeners have Spotify, but if you could follow us, uh, add our songs to your playlist, it's, it's a huge help to us to, to, you know, get more plays out there and, and you know, forward those links to your friends and, and forward your playlist to your friends with us on it so they can hear us. You know, it's, it's, it's a huge help when people pass that stuff around. So, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll send you a track tonight for sure. Let me know what one so we can tell people at the end of the episode what one you're going to send. I'm going to let you pick because it's player's choice. Uh, I, well, since, since I was already talking about uh, – uh, well, it depends. Do you want something a little heavy or do you want something a little punky? Oh, man. Uh, surprise me, I guess. Punky maybe? <laughs> okay. So so our, our, our most, like, pop punk of all pop punk songs is uh, – probably the first track that we wrote together uh it's called bitter it's off of our first ep um and that's that's like the that is our sound you know that's our we've developed everything from that sound and i mean we've evolved from it but everything comes back to that track so. all right well sweet we'll have to add bitter to the end of this episode um you were talking about our listeners having Spotify, and actually that's a great segue because now, folks, you can get the Journey into Comics Network, which includes the Voice of Survival podcast, on Spotify as well as iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play Music, uh, Podbean. There are hosting site, journeyintocomics.com, or alternately, go to patreon.com backslash journeyintocomics. Give us $1 for early access, 3 bucks for early access and exclusive content which hopefully we've been doing a good job with some exclusive content. We've been doing The Road to Infinity War, covering all the MCU movies all the way up and until the release of Infinity War now on April 27th. Here soon, the Voice of Survival podcast will be doing the Spider-Man Homecoming review. I'm so excited to talk about that since Spidey's my favorite fucking hero of all time. Um, and always check me out on all the different social medias, whether it's the Voice of Survival podcast on Instagram, the Voice of Survival podcast on Facebook, or Voice of Survival on Twitter, I think is what it is. Um, but that's all for me. Chris, I want to thank you so much for coming on today, man. It's been a blast. It has been fun, and thank you for having me, and thank you for working with me on this, man. I, I've been wanting to do this for a while. No problem. Now the next step is to get you in a show that's not just an interview where we can really nerd down together. A hundred percent, I'm in. So we'll, we'll make plans. I'll, I'll talk to you about some ideas I have coming up in the, in the next couple weeks. Sounds great. Awesome, man. Well, as always, I've been Nate. Thank you so much for listening to The Voice of Survival. Let's go ahead and introduce the song Bitter by Get By. <laughs> 